Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. This time I'm planning my month of May in my bullet journal in real time with a chit chat. So I did this video type of thing for April and you really enjoyed me planning in real time and doing some type of chit chat while I plan my month of April. So this time I'm doing the same thing but for May. Normally in these videos I plan to talk about what I'm doing in my bullet journal, the theme, everything that I'm doing, and to talk about the topics that you also requested me to talk about on Instagram. So for the month of May I decided to do yellow and basically this month was a combination of the rejected options on my April setup. So for April, if you didn't know, I did um, the followers control my bullet journal theme, which basically means that you are the ones choosing my themes, layouts, and spreads for the month of April. So I had a bunch of polls going on on Instagram and you just chose what you would like to see for April. So I did a huge calendar for April, I did an individual habit tracker and the options that didn't get picked up for April, I did the ones that I wanted for May. It's kind of complicated to explain but you'll see what I mean in a bit. Basically, um, because you had two options, one of them won and the other was the rejected one. And some of the options were really interesting, so I decided to combine some of the ones that I liked that got rejected and do them in May. One of the themes that got rejected uh, was yellows. Uh, the last time that I did a yellow theme in my bullet journal was in March 2019, and I really like yellow now. <laughs> I'm just like um, in a yellow vibe lately, and so I decided that because it wasn't picked up for my April theme, I'm going to do it for May for sure. So that's what I did. I basically used a lot of yellow shades, some more mustardy and others more bright, but the whole theme is yellows. And because when I was planning this month's theme, the only the yellow on my notebook was looking kind of boring and not that interesting, I decided to add some leaves to it. That's normally what I do when I feel like a month is just not like super interesting. I normally add some line art doodles and that's what I did for this month. So I decided to also use my watercolors because I always use markers when I'm planning my theme. I never try to use other mediums. Uh, so I decided that I was going to use watercolor this time, but the oval shapes, I, I don't even know what to call them, but the oval shapes that I'm going to do in a bit for the cover page, um, you can easily do them in marker if you prefer. And you don't have to wait for them to dry, which is a bonus. But I really like the look of the oval shapes with the watercolors, because I, that's something that I need to work on. I don't use watercolors that much, so um, it was a good experience to use them for this month's theme. And because I also have a notebook that has pretty thick pages, uh, I decided that it's good to use watercolors instead of markers. This is the Tsuki Bullet Journal by Notebook Therapy, um, and the pages are extremely thick, they are 160 GSMs, so you can use watercolors and gouache or acrylics here and they will not um, bleed through or the pages will not curl a lot. I think mine, uh, my pages in this bullet journal for this month, um, they curled a little bit because I'm not used to use watercolors and I'm not that careful with the water so I was just like painting and by the end of the theme I noticed that some of the pages were kind of curled but for me that's not a problem. I was pretty happy to put this notebook to the test this month and to use watercolors to color in bigger areas. So that was basically what I did for this month. Um, I think it's pretty minimal as per usual. I don't like to do extremely hard themes or themes that you would not like to recreate or that you can't recreate. There are a lot of bullet journalists here on YouTube that do extremely hard themes that are beautiful, but that are extremely hard. But I think that a minimal illustration or a minimal look to the bullet journal, it's much better. At least that's my opinion, of course. I watch a lot of plant-based pride, but she always does like 
beautiful artistic paintings and drawings in her bullet journal and I really love seeing her pages her pages are stunning but they're something that I would never do in my bullet journal because it's just too hard for me it's just something very simple because the decorations and the extras and the illustrations and overall they are just extras in your bullet journal you know what I mean so I still like to do colorful themes and to paint and draw on my bullet journal but I prefer to keep it pretty simple so even though I painted a lot in this month and it took me a little bit longer to film um, it's still minimal just how I like so that was basically what I did for me and even though it's not a very different theme I think it's pretty basic um, I really enjoyed it so for the month of May, I'm doing my cover page on the left side of the bullet journal. I actually started doing this back in March because in February this year, I noticed that I wasn't looking at or using my quote page or cover page. Um, those are the most useless pages in the bullet journal. For me, they are just like the introduction for the month, but they are useless. So I don't like to... Um, waste pages in my bullet journal um, with useless pages. I only do the essential pages in my bullet journal every month and every now and then I add a new page when I know that I'm going to have the time to use it or I want to try it for the first time. So that's when I do extra pages that I'm actually going to use. But useless pages like the quote page and the cover page, I prefer to combine them. So. Starting in March, I decided to start combining them, so I always do a quote on my cover page and I keep them on the left side, because when you do a quote page on the left side and a cover page on the right side, throughout the month you never look at your cover page. I don't know if some of you have noticed that, but you never look at it, because you don't have anything to track there, you don't have anything to write in there on a daily basis, so you never look at them. So those are the pages that you do. In your bullet journal but that you never use which it doesn't make any sense for me so in February I noticed that that I was only flipping through my bullet journal to see my calendar and my trackers but I was never looking at my quote page or cover page so I noticed that and in March I did my quote page and cover page combined on the left side and just like I'm going to do for this month uh, I did the mini calendar on the right side. So every time that I was going through my calendar, every other day or every day, I would take a look at my cover page and I realized that I was actually reading the quote page every month. And for me, the quote page for every month has like the mantra or the, you know, phrase of the month type of thing. So that's why I have my quote page always on the left. I explained this, I think in March or in one of the Buju vlogs, I don't remember, but in, it got me thinking that I never looked at my cover page or quote page if they are separate and I don't have any reason to look at them. So that is the reason why I always now do my quote page and cover page combined on the left side. So I can do like a daily tracking type of thing page on the right side. For April I did the daily highlights that you suggested and I actually looked at my quote page every day because I have the daily highlights page to fill in every day and for this month I'm doing just like the one that I did for March with the calendar on the right side I'm going to answer some of the topics that you mentioned on Instagram um, the first one that I picked up was how has your life changed because of the virus and how do you manage it? So it has been like a month since I've been in self-isolation and I have been noticing a lot of things in my life, um, good and bad. The good thing is that I haven't been eating a lot of crap <laughs> because when I used to go out, I would go out and eat like McDonald's or something every week or every other week. And since self-isolation, I haven't been eating any of that, which is really really good uh, I kind of miss those things and we can order food but we prefer not to and to eat healthy in the meantime that we are at home because at the same time we don't move our bodies a lot so we, we, we eat less um, I've been noticing that I have been 
less tired because again i don't do a lot of work i don't need to drive to to my job i don't need to drive home um you know i don't spend time with my friends and i don't go out uh and so i get less tired the only time that i got tired during self-isolation was when i was working from 11 p.m until 7 a.m the next day um working nights is always very tiring and so i was very very um tired when i was working nights but besides that i haven't been tired as much as i used to be when i was going to work and it's obviously good because now i just don't take days off normally when i was going to work um i would take the day off before my work day to just like relax and you know do some self-care but now that all of the days are kind of days off i don't take a day off before my work day and i feel like i don't need to but at the same time i feel like it's a habit that i should keep doing i don't know like i'm not that tired but at the same time i don't want to say that i don't need days off for, because i still need those even though i'm not that tired i still need to take some days off but i've been noticing that i'm less tired uh, i've been noticing also that i have been much more productive because obviously i don't have to leave my house for anything except to check my peel box every week um but besides that i i'm not tired so i'm more productive and when i'm working from home for my job because i'm, I'm still working from home i can be at my job and you know working but i can have my laptop and scripting a video or planning a video planning my life editing a video finishing some details on it and i'm still productive whereas if i was at my job i couldn't do that so that has been great because now as you know i'm posting three times a week and i used to post two times a week the only thing that changed is that now my videos are not done in a huge advance. I normally have videos planned like two weeks in advance. They are already done in a, and uploaded to YouTube, but they are just private. Um, now I'm kind of struggling with that, but it's not a huge problem in my opinion. Um, it's just like a little detail, but I have been enjoying posting three times a week. Um, I actually decided to do that because I noticed that I myself on YouTube, like the YouTubers that I subscribe to, they upload the same amount of content because before this pandemic they were working from home. So the things that they were doing and the frequency that they were posting videos, it's basically the same because they are still at home. But for me it's different because working with shifts at my job I was uploading two times a week and now that I don't need to leave the house I have much more time to film videos and edit so I decided to start posting three times a week um, because the, the channel that I'm subscribed to they like I was running out of content <laughs> and I don't like to search for other youtubers and I don't like to you know dig deep into the youtube world and just see what other channels are out there normally I subscribe to people because they are interesting and I like their content and I just don't subscribe to new people <laughs> so it has been great to post three times a week I don't I try to not uh, cut on the quality but I have been much more productive in this way which is really good the other thing that I've noticed is that I actually don't want to read as much when I was at my job, like the midday break and at my lunchtime and at my afternoon break, I used to go to the other building where we work. Uh, we work in one building and then we have um, like a type of a bridge to the other building and we it's when we chill on our breaks and I used to go there three times a day to read and I would spend like an hour in total per day sometimes. Uh, reading and now that I'm at home I just wanted to work and I just want to film and edit videos and I kind of don't have the time to read um, this week I'm actually filming a productive week in my life bujo vlog type of thing and I'm trying to take half an hour to one hour to just read 
I finished The Family Upstairs and now I'm reading Atomic Habits and at the same time because I'm not tired and I don't have any reason to make time to read, I don't want to read, I just want to work. But I still try to do that every day and so yeah. The other thing that I also noticed since I've been in self-isolation is that I have been more creative. Um, I'm taking my time to create pages in my art journal because I started an art journal um, and I have just been journaling every now and then and doing some art pages in my art journal. I have been painting stuff, I painted some bookmarks the other day, I have been taking my time to just make new pen pals and overall I've been more creative on that area, but at the same time I'm not creating a lot of things, but I feel like my creativity is not suffering from being in self-isolation and um, that is great because otherwise if my creativity stops hitting me and I don't have any ideas, my channel kind of stops, so that can happen. Um, the only thing that I haven't been doing is filming art journal pages. I haven't filmed anything because I started an art journal, but Sometimes like I have to spend an hour on Pinterest or Instagram searching for art journal pages and kind of get inspiration to make one. But sometimes when the inspiration comes, it's late at night and I don't like to film late at night. I only film at night when I really need to do it or it's part of a video or something like that because otherwise I don't like to film at night. I have some pages saved on Instagram to kind of create my own version of them. Um, so that's what I basically plan to do on the art journals. So that's basically what I plan to do on my art journal. I don't want to force it because when I'm inspired to create a page, I don't want to just grab my camera and film it. I feel like that kind of kills the vibe a little bit. But... Um, I'm going to try to record once a month an art page and then we'll just see what that, what I do from there because it's the same thing with the pen pals. I like to film them but when it feels forced and I'm not really inspired to film a pen pal I just don't film it and I just um, postpone it to another day when I'm feeling like okay now I'm creative enough to um, film a pen pal and to do a really good pen pal theme that's when I film because I actually did a pen pal um, back when I started um, that I didn't film and it was one of the best pen pals I've ever made but at the same time I have to make money out of the videos so I need to film the pen pals and also now I posted a yellow theme pen pal this week if I'm not mistaken and the videos are getting really good views <laughs> at first they were kind of mm, they are not performing that usual but now they are having but now they are getting more views than my normal videos which is weird <laughs> I can confidently say that the pen pal videos on my channel are the are in the top three of the more viewed videos which is weird <laughs> because when I introduced them nobody wanted to see the pen pal videos because my channel wasn't a pen pal related channel uh, but now it is and the videos are getting pretty good views so it's another um, bonus while making the pen pals so yeah those are the major changes uh, I think I of course miss my friends and I of course miss going out with them and connect with them and just know how they are because I'm not a person to call uh, my friends I'm not a person to um, I'm not a person that text texts my friends like oh, how are you how are you doing and all that stuff I'm just not that type of person but I miss spending time with my friends in general obviously because now I'm here alone with my parents and uh, I don't go out so yeah but besides that I'm kind of okay with the whole situation I am an introvert, so I like to be at home. I like to be alone and at home doing my own stuff, um, creating content, doing what I love, and that's what I've been doing for the past month in self-isolation. One thing that I've been noticing that I hate is that the stationery that I bought from Wish and HaliExpress, they are not um, 
arriving you know they are not coming to my house anytime soon some of it came and i have it stored and some of it i already opened but i had a stationary haul planned and i was like okay they are going to come like periodically of course they don't come like all at the same time in the same week um so i was like okay i'm just going to save them because in like a month time period they are going to come and i can film the stationary haul but now it's the middle of april and they haven't come yet so yeah i have stationery that i ordered for that video that are already opened because i've been showing them like the stationery paul washi tapes the cat stickers what else yeah basically the stationery paul stuff it's the the majority of it some things that i bought for my pen pals and i have stickers stored in my closet that i already opened but i kind of want to open again in the stationery hall which doesn't make a lot of sense but yeah but now the other ones are not coming anytime soon i think i haven't been receiving any um packages in the mail only the ones that are for a collaboration or a sponsorship are the ones that i'm receiving because the other things i'm not receiving anything anything that i purchased with my own money i'm not receiving anything um which kind of sucks but yeah and that is something that i've been frustrated about because normally on a normal day you know i receive the things in time but now with the pandemic i'm not receiving the things and it's kind of like a first world problem but when you have a video planned and you can't quite use the items because it's too open on a stationary hall it kind of sucks and it's very frustrating but besides that i'm fine i plan to make a video about like where i shop my stationery and how i purchase it and how much time it takes to get here but i kind of want to do that after the pandemic obviously because this is not going to work or my idea is to basically grab like three or four stores like the washi tape shop i have been seeing a lot of um washi tapes that they have and stickers that are really really cute and i kind of want to spend money on them because the store it's really interesting um stationery paul has awesome prices for stickers and washi tapes and pens in general so i kind of want to purchase from them again and i have notebook therapy and i haven't purchased anything because obviously the pandemic but because i have a package coming in the mail that i don't know what it has in it so i don't want to purchase washi tapes and stickers that i don't know if they are going to come in that package so just to be safe i haven't ordered anything those are the things that i've been noticing in my life lately i don't see a lot of change i also haven't seen any changes in my weight which is cool because i used to go to the gym like two to three times a week and now i just don't go to the gym and i hate working out at home I work out like every other day or so, three times a week max. I, I hate working out at home. But the good thing is that I haven't been noticing that I'm fatter or that I feel bad about my body, which is really cool. So I think we're even because I'm not eating junk food. So yeah, those are the major changes in um, being in self-isolated and because of the virus. I haven't seen a lot of changes, basically. I've seen those points, but nothing like dramatic about my life which is good i think so now i'm starting to paint the blobs of colors i don't know what to call them i'm going to call them blobs because i've also been watching casey golden here on youtube she's a very 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 creative artist and she does really cute illustrations and i've been binge watching her channel basically for the past two weeks and she I'm, I saw a video where she did like different blobs of colors and she created um, illustrations off of them with fine liners and I thought that that was really interesting and so kind of those blobs of color that's the name that stuck to me when I'm making these um, blobs of colors because I don't know what else to call them besides blobs of colors or like oval shapes but you get the idea. I'm doing the blob colors 
I'm doing the blobs of colors now on my habit tracker and on my expense tracker. I'm not very happy with these two spreads. I feel like I got out of the box with ideas and um, these pages weren't the best idea to do. But you live and you learn, so I decided to make the habit tracker on the side and the title on the left side instead of being on top of the habit tracker. And the expense trackers are divided by weeks, which was really weird. But yeah, once the pages are done, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and by the way, I want to apologize. I apologize in my normal blue journal setup, but I want to apologize in this video as well if you haven't watched it already. The light in this video is so weird. <laughs> so I filmed with a tripod and with a ring light, but it's not a very good and efficient ring light. It's just to give enough light because I film in the morning with my windows open, but the ring light really helps um, with artificial light, obviously. But for some reason, this setup was darker than the others. And I think it was because of the yellows and I think that the colors of the board that I use for the background of my videos and my sweatshirt that was yellow, my hands that were kind of pale, I think that everything kind of blends together and my camera didn't know where to focus. And so the light is kind of weird and I have weird shadows. So uh, it was just chaotic, but I filmed it anyways and I decided to post it anyways. But I'm planning to change my background because I'm actually not liking the background in my videos or photos. It looks great because it's like a wood board, but I'm kind of tired of it. I want to change it. Plus, I want to get a stand-up desk from Ikea and the color of the background was going to be either white or brown. Like a light brown similar to the to the board that I'm using now for the background, but lighter. And I feel like I prefer that as well, but I'm only going to purchase the desk after the pandemic because I want to see what I'm going to purchase because it's kind of expensive. But besides that, I'm not really liking the uh, background now. I'm kind of tired of it. There was a time on my channel back in 2019 that I would change my backgrounds for every theme. And I kind of like that, but that is an expensive thing to do. So I just, quit and now I have this board and it works well depending on the colors of the notebook and the light that I'm receiving from my window because otherwise uh, it's it's cool it's a good board but you know I have these little problems So as you can see, like down the left page of my bullet journal, the pages are kind of curling because I went a lot of times uh, on the same spot with water. So that was one of the problems, but this notebook holds the water pretty well. And I'm actually excited to try the nighttime edition bullet journal that they have. Um, notebook therapy came with that notebook, I think at the beginning of this year, if I'm not mistaken. And I've been obsessed with that notebook because the pages are bigger, it has more pages, it's prettier, so it's just like the upgrade version that we needed um, in a notebook and I'm really excited to try that out. This notebook has been really great. The next topic is how do you spend your time in quarantine? Um, basically, I discovered um, two weeks ago from some opinions and from my personal experience and realization that I'm a workaholic. I'm one of those people that thinks about working, working and working and making more content and producing more and in this case editing videos and filming videos and when I'm filming a video or editing a video I'm already thinking about the next video that I'm going to film or the next video that I'm going to edit and of course that can that can be really bad because if you don't take care of yourself if you don't relax you kind of hit a burnout and you just 
stop working and function in the right way. Uh, but I realized that I'm a workaholic, which I don't know if this is something bad, but in this case it's really good because I'm a workaholic and I'm making money out of this. And the more I work, and that is something that I've been realizing since the beginning of this year, the more I work, the more I post, the more I film, the more I edit, uh, the more money I make. And so for me that's, that's awesome. <laughs> So I'm a workaholic, but I'm really proud of it, you know, because I have a job that pays me well and I have YouTube and other side things that I do that also pay me well. And the more I work for them, the more I earn. So yeah, I got this, this realization last month and I was just like, okay, I'm a workaholic. Let's keep it up. Let's continue making more videos and editing more and creating more and think about what other things can I uh, bring up to the channel and all that stuff because um, this pandemic is bad in that area that you are bored and everything but basically I'm spending my time in quarantine filming videos, editing videos, making pen pal letters, um, thinking about new videos to do, thinking about new content for my channel um, I've been brainstorming more like self-development and bullet journal 101 type of videos uh, for my channel because in May I actually celebrate three years of bullet journaling and I obviously want to do um, a video all about it like what I learned and what I do now that I did differently back then in 2017 when I started um, and yeah I was supposed to host a giveaway for the three-year thing but I think I'm going to postpone it for my birthday uh, which is in June because with this pandemic no one is going to receive anything I still have the giveaway items from Banggood giveaway if you in, even remember that video that I made back in February because I don't want to February or March I don't remember I don't want to send the giveaway prices because I didn't pay for the items but if the items get stolen or if something happens to the package or the package gets lost, I still have to give the giveaway prizes to the winners. And Banggood is not going to give me uh, the items again. I have to purchase them with my own money and I don't want to do that. So I'm not sending the packages until this pandemic is over and don't worry, the winners know that I did that um, because it's better, you know, it's better for me, it's better for them because I could have sent the packages now, but le like if they get lost or something happens to them, they will not receive the prices. So it's better to wait, in my opinion, and then when once this is all over, to send them safely and they arrive safely at their houses. So I was planning a giveaway for the three-year bullet journal like anniversary, but I think I'm going to postpone it for my birthday and do like a birthday giveaway instead. I'm going off topic a lot. <laughs> so, back to the question, how do I spend my time in quarantine? Filming, editing, planning, organizing my life, um, stressing about wanting to buy some stationery but waiting for the packages to arrive, uh, reading every now and then, um, I learned how to iron, <laughs> well I haven't learned um, a lot yet, I tried to iron but yeah, now that I'm at home, I help more with the household, so I learned how to iron, but the only thing that I don't spend time doing now is spending time with my friends and going to work and going to the gym because I'm still doing the same things that I, that I did before. Plus, I'm being more creative. That is just like, uh, yeah. I'm spending more time doing those things and I feel like now it's a great time to uh, just do new things. I know that I saw a post on Instagram I think about someone saying like, uh, oh you don't need to start new things or new hobbies or new habits in this pandemic, like you don't need to do that and I agree you don't need to start you know painting every day or drawing every day but if that if it's something that you 
wanted to do and you didn't have the time, I think now it's the perfect opportunity to do that. So obviously don't create habits that once this is over, they are impossible to keep up. But, you know, try new things. I'm not saying to create new habits, but um, for example, for me, I've been painting a lot. I've been experiencing uh, using watercolors. I've been watching classes on Skillshare about watercolors and doodles and everything. And yeah, that was something that I wanted to do for a long time, but because I was at my job and I was busy and tired, I didn't have the time, but now I have. So I think that now it's the best time to do that. And I know that it's kind of easy to just spend an entire afternoon watching Netflix and not doing much because you're in quarantine and you're bored, but there's so many things out there that you can do and you know, it's just it's just different, but that's what I've been doing basically. So as you can see on my habit tracker, I did the habits on the right side of the page and the title on the left, which was actually one of the um, images that I use on the polls for my April theme. I kind of like it, but I feel like it's not something that I would repeat in the future. I'm not sure if I like the title on the left side. Let me know what you think, but it's kind of weird. And because May has 31 days, I had to do 33 squares on the individual habits, and I'm basically going to leave them blank or painted them black. I don't know, but once the end of the the end of the year, but once the end of the month comes along, I will think about what I'm going to do with them. But this was not the prettiest layout that I've ever done for my habit tracker. I think that I'm going to stick with the other ones. So next, I'm moving on to my expense tracker, and to be honest, uh, I don't know if you're going to. St and to be honest, I don't know if you're, we are going to still be in quarantine in May. I don't know, but I decided to instead of doing like um, a line for each expense, to kind of use squares, in this case rectangles, to divide my expenses by the weeks and to put my outcomes and incomes on the rectangles for each week, if that makes sense. For April, I did a huge expense tracker and it ended up not working because, again, I don't spend time with my friends, so I don't spend money in McDonald's, bowling, movies. I don't spend money on gas for my car because I don't drive my car. Uh, so I haven't been having the same expenses that I had before, which is amazing, but um, for May I'm going to divide them by weeks. And I acknowledge this on my normal bullet journal setup, but basically for many people May has five weeks, but because the first week of May has more days in April than in May, um, that week for me belongs to April, and I did a weekly spread for April for that week because that week for me um, belongs to April and that was basically something that I think I never talked about on my channel but the way I decide if that week goes to that month or the previous month is by the amount of days that that week has from each month so in this case the first week of May I think it has four days in April and three days in May so because there are more days in April for me that week belongs to April and not for May, if that makes sense. That's just how I decide. For a lot of people, it's when the first day of the month comes, it's 
on that month that belongs, something like that. But for me, it doesn't make sense that way, so that's what I do. So before you comment in the comments down below that I forgot one week, that's how I decide um, which week to do on my um, bullet journal and where to add that week. So the next topic that I picked up was what qualities do you find good in a pen pal? So this is a great question if you don't know if you should start pen paling with people or if you're just like not sure why would you start pen paling with people. Uh, I decided to start pen paling because I like to connect with you guys, especially on Instagram. Um, if you message me to chat about something, I will chat with you. Um, but one thing is obviously DM each other and talk through Instagram and other is exchanging letters. There's something so therapeutic and so like personal when you write a letter for someone and the other person receives the letter and it's happy that you wrote to them, you know, and I remember when I opened my PO box and I had a lot of DMs of people saying like they wanted to exchange pen pals with me. I was the happiest I've ever been um, because that would mean that people want to connect with me. They want to know more about me and to not only have the cat that is on that channel or on that Instagram. They want to know more about the person behind all of that. You know what I mean? And at first I accepted all the pen pals and now I kind of suspended them. The reason why I suspended my pen pals was because I was receiving DMs of people of like, they just wanted to exchange pen pals, they didn't have a reason, they were just collecting pen pals type of thing. You know, one thing is when you have like 10 people to exchange pen pals and you want to get to know them and, you know, uh, create a friendship and connect with people in general and other is to exchange pen pals with people for the sake of the stickers that they will send or the washi tapes that they will send and not for the main purpose of pen paling, which I think that it's exchanging letters and exchanging goodies, but the letter is the most important part, obviously. So for me, when I write a letter for someone, I remember when I wrote my first for Sophia, she was also one of the first people to send me a pen pal. When I wrote her pen pal, I was like thinking about her reading the pen pal and feeling really happy that I wrote back to her and that we can have like a friendship, even though it's online and I'm probably not never going to see her, but to have like a friendship, even though it's online, you know, it, that is really magical in my opinion, because nowadays we can connect with so many people, but it's only like a small fraction of those people that you can actually connect with. And through the pen pals, it's a way of having new friends, in this case, online friends, um, to get to know new people, to learn things with them, to connect in another way that I've never connected before. That is one of the main qualities in a pen pal. Um, plus, everyone is different. Every pen pal that you have is going to be different. Um, and so they always have different things to share with you. Some of my pen, some of my pen pals, they share about like movies and uh, things that they want to do and things that they want to watch. Others are just kind of like journaling to me. They wrote like what they did today, what they did this week, how they felt, um, you know. They journal their feelings on the pen pal, which I think that it's the best thing to do because you are like telling how you feel to someone that you don't know personally. That is, that is amazing. And so when I read the pen pals that are kind of like journaling to me, it's so like interesting to read that person's problems or how that their day went but you don't know the person personally you know what i mean it's kind of like a more personal twitter or something like that um and when someone journals about their day or how they feeling i also try to journal about that 
and if someone talks about hobbies and books i also talk about that and the good thing is that the pen pals are always different even if it's from the same person you can in the first pen pal talk about your hobbies but on the next one you can talk about um some foods that you like or places to try not that right now it's a good idea but you know there are so many things to talk about with a pen pal and in my opinion personally because you don't know what that person likes you can talk about anything that if they don't like or if they don't watch something they will respond to i don't watch that but i like to watch this you know and it's a different type of connection and for me it's always a good feeling to open my PO box every week and to see their pen pals. If you have a PO box, that is one of the best feelings ever. When you open a, your PO box and it's like with two or three letters, that's like amazing. Like I love that. <laughs> and obviously it's really sad when I'm going to my PO box only to check my PO box and it's empty. So <laughs> that was one of the qualities that I find in the pen pals. Some pen pals are better than others, and I don't classify my pen pals by what I send to them. Some pen pals I send more stuff than others, but it's not that I like those more, if that makes sense. I try to not um, show that on the pen pal and on my videos. It's not because I sent you five stickers or five washi tapes that I liked your pen pal better, or if I sent you a bookmark like I did on my last pen pal video um that i really want to exchange pen pals with you and that you deserve more love than the other pen pals i try to not do that but i also try to not give the same amount of stuff and the same stuff to to uh, all of my pen pals if that makes sense i obviously received pen pals of people that have been watching my channel since i started I received pen pals from people who didn't know me, but my videos really helped them. That they like my bullet journal status because it's really easy, they like the way I edit my videos and that's amazing. But I also received, at this point, two pen pals, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of people that I felt that they were just exchanging pen pals with me just for the sake of receiving goodies or because I filmed my pen pal videos. And I, I obviously don't want to say that, oh, you are only exchanging pen pals with me because you want the goodies and the hype of my video. My pen pal videos get a lot of views, but most of the people just watch the video for the sake of the video and the content and what I do on the pen pal letter. They are not going to watch because it's that certain person, if that makes sense. So I obviously, at the same time, I don't want to think that that's the reason why they are exchanging pen pals with me. but. In some of the pen pals they just write one or two things and they send a bunch of things and I feel, and that's the feeling that I have and I believe that if you put that certain amount of love and what you feel and what, what you're feeling when you're writing the pen pal, it's what the other person that receives the pen pal is going to feel, in my opinion because that's what I feel. In some pen pals I almost cry right, uh, reading le the letters, in others I'm just like, okay, so why are you exchanging pen pals with me? And in other pen pals that I open, uh, I'm just like, okay, you are sending me a bunch of stuff, you probably want a bunch of stuff as well. That's just how I feel. But yeah, that is the bad thing of pen pals, and I actually watched some videos on YouTube of pen pal letters obviously and some of them have been experiencing that that people only exchange pen pals with them to receive the goodies and in my opinion that sucks a lot um, and of course that the I put more love on the pen pals from people that I know that have been supporting me and that have been watching my videos and liking my posts on Instagram because those are the people that I'm thankful for obviously but I've been seeing that big channels on YouTube suffer from that as well, uh, and it just sucks. <laughs> but I feel like it's something that you will experience um, on the pen pals, and that's why, that's one of the reasons why I suspended my pen pals because I was noticing that people were just wanted to exchange pen pals with me for the sake of exchanging, not for the whole hype of 
meeting something new, meeting someone new. You know what I mean? So I suspended my pen pals. So my PO box is still open. I am still available to receive letters. But if you haven't DM'd me on Instagram to exchange pen pals with me, and I said specifically yes that I was going to exchange pen pals with you, I'm just not going to respond those letters. And I feel like it's a good thing to set up some boundaries. Because if I didn't set up those boundaries, I think that for at this point, I would probably have like 20 people that I was exchanging pen pals with. And that's not what I want. I don't want to exchange 20 pen pals um, with 20 different people just because they want to exchange pen pals with me. And I was going to benefit from that as well because I was going to have more videos about pen pals. But that's not the point of this, you know? So those are the qualities and the bad things about pen pals. Of course, if you don't have a YouTube channel and you just do the pen pals for the sake of doing them, you don't experience this. But the best thing about the pen pals is that you get to connect with new people. And I know that you don't connect like in real life because most of my pen pals are from the United States or from Slovenia. So I will probably never meet them, but you connect with other people in this magical way of exchanging letters and there's nothing better than that, you know what I mean? So, back to my bullet journal. I did a brain dump page as per usual. This month I couldn't come up with a fun title for my brain dump page, so I just wrote brain dump page. Um, so I just wrote brain dump and yeah, I have a video planned that is probably to come two weeks from now or next week in this case, if you're watching this the day it comes out. Because I have been seeing a lot of comments about like, what is the brain dump page? How do you use it? Uh, what do you write on there? Like, how do you divide the pages? Like, basically, how do you use the brain dump page? And so I have a video ready, uh, almost ready. I'm just waiting for the end of April to film like the full brain dump for April and just then show you guys how I use my brain dump throughout the month and everything. And the migration from one month to the other. I feel like that is going to be really interesting, but I like to do my brain dump page really open with uh, a lot of space because I normally do some lists and some like my tasks for the month and my projects that I'm that I have going on I normally keep them in my random page that is one of the reasons why I no longer have um, tasks on my calendar for the month because I normally put all the tasks on my random page and that's done things that are monthly I still have them on my uh, calendar for example now for April I still have my monthly tasks on the task section on my calendar but for may i'm not going to have that so i'm going to have everything on my to-do list on my brain dump page and that's just how i work with that but i have a video ready so don't worry if you want more like detailed information about the brain dump page i have a video ready about that The next question that I picked up was how to plan a bullet journal before starting one. For me personally, uh, I started my bullet journal in 2017 and I did a bunch of lists uh, on my first bullet journal. I experienced, I tried different layouts and spreads and I went all in basically. I didn't do a monthly calendar, but I did a cover page. I did a habit tracker with a lot of habits. Um, I did the expense tracker and the weekly spread and my opinion if I was going to start one right now I would probably try to watch minimal bullet journal setups um, like my videos I think they are pretty minimal in terms of like the spreads because I always try to explain the spreads that I'm doing I have a video about how to start a bullet journal as a beginner um, and I would probably search for the setups from My Life in a Bullet. I really like to watch her setups because she only does the essential 
And when you are a beginner, you don't want to do a lot of things. You want to do some things every month to try different spreads. So instead of doing like 30 pages before your monthly pages on your bullet journal, you just do some of them. And as you go throughout the months, you can add them in the middle of your bullet journal, which it's not, uh, it's not something that I personally do, but you can. And I think that when you start a bullet journal, you probably want to do all the pages, but if you've never had an agenda or a bullet journal, it can be hard to um, stay up with them. So I don't recommend doing like a monthly calendar, a mood tracker, a habit tracker, a one line a day page, a gratitude log, an expense tracker, you know, I don't recommend going all in on your first month. But what I recommend is one month you try, for example, a monthly calendar with a big calendar, like really simple, a uh, habit tracker with like six habits or so, um, things that you want to do every day or every other day, but that you would like to adapt into your life, uh, an expense tracker, if you care about money and you like to save money and see what your money is going, an expense tracker, my expense trackers are always super simple to set up, so... Um, and I would probably do a weekly spread, um, like the one that I'm doing for May, which is just like a quarter for each day and a monthly calendar in the corner or a tasks section uh, for the weekly spread. I would not include a one line a day page or a quote page because that is just an extra, or a brain dump, because when you start the bullet journal, I think you should know how to work with it first, and then you would, you would try different pages and spreads, in my opinion. So I would pretty much start with those pages, and then for the next month, I would do like a review once the this month is over, to see like, okay, what pages did I liked, what habits did I enjoy, what habits the work, what layouts worked, um, if the calendar was good enough for you, if you need a smaller calendar, if you want to try another layout, and every month try different layouts. And don't focus about the theme because the theme is just an extra. Um, but focus on the layouts and how do you use your bullet journal with those layouts. Do you like using it? Do you feel like something is not good? You, it, it, something needs to change. If you feel that, Take notes about that and change the layout for the upcoming month. The good thing about the bullet journal is that you can change your layouts every month. I personally don't like to do the same layout for the same spread two months in a row. I have to change something uh, except for the brain dump page because that page is always going to be open with some borders around it. But my expense tracker, I'm constantly changing it, even though I don't change it a lot, but I change it every month. My habit tracker, I always change it. My weekly spreads are always different, and now that I post journal with me, weekly spread for the third week of the month, I pretty much um, try two layouts for every month. And yes, there's going to be a point where you don't have a lot of layouts and you have to repeat them, but that's the great thing about bullet journaling. But for a beginner, Personally, I think that you should try to pick up like five pages to do in your bullet journal and then for the upcoming month You take one out and you try for example a mood tracker instead of the expense tracker if the expense tracker didn't Did any didn't do anything for you? I would try to do for example a mood tracker instead of the habit tracker if you see that you're doing your habits every day and you don't want to create new habits in your life or to adapt new habits, change the habit tracker for a mood tracker and just see what pages you missed and what pages you like to have and what pages you feel like they are essentials. And it's not in a month or two that you're going to see that your bullet journal is how you like it. I spend a long time figuring out that a mood tracker doesn't give me any information and it was just for Instagram sakes. But, um, yeah, I for four months I tried a sleep log and now I notice that I don't need a sleep log for what months, I don't remember, but for a lot of, but for a long, for a long time I tried a mood tracker and it didn't work and one day I just decided to take it out my bullet journal. I tried a health tracker, uh, I think the first time that I did it was in July and yeah. 
being a beginner it's good because you can try a lot of things and in my opinion you go light and as you try new bullet journals and notebooks and spreads you are going to notice what spreads work for you and what spreads just don't give you any information at the end of the month and you don't need to do them nowadays i have a certain amount of spreads that i do every month because they are my essentials and every now and then i include a new spread or i change the layouts or i change how i do a certain spread because I personally like to change my bullet journal every now and then. I remember that for September and October 2019, I did the same layouts and I just hated, like for October, I hated that I had the same layouts that I did for September because for me, I like to change my spreads and layouts every month. It gives me that new feeling of change. You know, I'm not doing the same thing over again. That's what I like about the bullet journal. But in my opinion, just start light, pick a couple of pages, watch minimal bullet journal setups and just try it. If you never try it, you never know what pages work for you. So now I'm just finishing my last pages. I'm just finishing my weekly spread and it's pretty simple. Uh, but normally that's what I like to do for the first week. Last month wasn't uh, the case, but I actually really enjoyed the weekly spread that I did for April. And it's a weekly spread that I want to change. I really enjoyed the weekly spread that you chose for me to do for April. And it's a weekly spread that I want to include in June at least. Because that weekly spread was really interesting. But... My basic weekly spread is just dividing the pages into quarters and a quarter for each day. It's just a basic one, but it works, you know, and I like to have minimal spreads like this because it's easier to set up and it's easier to just put there my events and tasks and go through the week and set it up. It's actually really easy. So that was the weekly spread that I did for this month. I'm going to post a new weekly spread on the third week of... I mean, on the second week for the third week of the month. Yeah, that's right. Um, with a new weekly spread. And by doing that video every month, I've been trying new weekly spreads and that's awesome. So overall, I'm really happy with this theme. I feel like it was not the best theme I've ever done, but it's a minimal and simple one, which it's good. But I fell in love with my April setup and the May setup was kind of like the rejected child you know of the family but i ended up really liking it so let me know what you thought about this bullet journal setup and this video and i'll see you in my next one bye guys